uh, coming up, we've got Felisa Rose, yeah. and uh, she is in the background here. Let's go ahead and bring her in. Everybody, welcome Felisa Rose. <gasps> Hi, guys. How are you? There she Hi. is. Hey. We're so glad to see you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank how you is, for coming. How is quarantine treating you? Oh, it's like one big party. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. For me. It's a constant like wine fest and yeah. house party Zoom. So staying in touch with people is really, it's actually, I think, brought people together a lot more. You know, yeah, we're yeah. bonding through this experience. Yeah. Do they, do they have alcohol yeah. delivery in your area? They have. Oh, we have that I think dose. Even if they hadn't, I think they started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's How great. are you doing? We're good. What do you have going on right now? Is there any upcoming? I saw you did a um, a short film while in quarantine. I saw that recently. Tell us a little about that. I did. Yes, my good friend uh, Michael Varadi. He put together a little short called Unusual Attachment and put a great cast together and said, "Hey, let's just be creative while we're isolated and kind of you know make something fun." And he did. And of course, just like he's so brilliant, um, it's gotten a lot of great kind of recognition and I'm really proud to be a part of anything that he has going on. He brought me into Dragula. I got to be a guest on Dragula. So Michael is is just a phenomenal person and talent. And um, and I've done two animated shows while I've been in quarantine and a couple of other kind of iPhone movies. So everyone's thinking, you know, trying to be creative and, and use their talents wisely while we're home. And I was yeah, watching, I was looking at your... Um, IMDb page, you've got so much going on. I think, do you ever sleep? You've got like all this stuff. Just... No, Charles, I do not. I love, that's why I thought at first it would be really difficult to be in quarantine because I do love my conventions. As you know, Texas Frightmare is my favorite and um, just kind of going from set to convention, set to convention, but we've slowed down and things were just postponed. So they weren't completely stopped, but I'm looking forward to kind of it all lifting and getting back on set and finishing what we started. There have been a lot of good projects in the in the making. I saw you're also working on Terrifier 2, is that correct? Yes, that's because I stalked those guys. I, I, I'm a huge Terrifier fan. And um, I just, I saw them at conventions and I said, I have to be a part of it. I see they're gonna be at Texas Frightmare. They are phenomenal guests, David Howard Thornton and Damien Leone and the Fuzz on the Lens guys. So definitely um, you'll have a blast with them. Um, but yeah, I finished my role in Terrifier 2 and I'm really excited for it to come out, I think in October. So um, definitely expect something outrageous as only they can bring to the horror genre. So that will be great. I have a feeling like you're really good at stalking people. Um, <laughs> I have it down to a T. Just like Adam Green with Hatchet, you know? It's kind of like I was a huge fan of the Hatchet franchise and I saw Adam at a convention and I just kind of said, you know, I want to work with you. I want to be a part of what you're doing. So, you know, I love great people like the two of you. You know, you meet good, good, wonderful folks. You just kind of want to be in their world. What horror maker would not want Felisa Rose involved in Aww. the pocket? Oh, but you're so sweet. I'm always like, I'll come and serve coffee. Like if I love, <laughs> if I love a movie, I just want to be around it, you know? So um, yeah, that's what I love about the genre. The community is so great, so fierce. We love each her, other. Uh, I told her before she should come to Frightmare and, and work our ticket counter. Just have I, her and back I said, there just please, yes. <laughs> I mean, I have to say big shout out to all of the volunteers to run your show and the two of you. It's really and truly one of the most amazing experiences I ever had at convention. Um, you reach such a global audience, so many wonderful folks who come and see you and fly out. And it was it was truly incredible. Thank you. I mean, for me, it was just like, they're always amazing. And I do love every convention I go to is like a family reunion and so much fun. I love the parties. I love the, the guests. I, I've become best friends with so many friends who I've met at conventions. But especially in Texas, I mean, you do it big, man. Dallas is like my second home. I'm there often. So um, I get to see a lot of friends when I'm there. And, and it's always, it's the best time. That ending was one of the most shocking endings I had ever seen in my entire, well, you know, even up to the day, it's still one of the most shocking endings. 
At how old were you when you did the film? So I was 13 when we filmed. We filmed in 1982. Um, and certainly when I read the script for the first time, I was shocked by it because we hadn't seen anything like it. And um, and definitely it was provocative for the time because it was a, I was a real young person and the subject matter was enormous. It was great. Um, even today, it still holds up. I think the social commentary on the film is, you know, um, kind of resonates with audiences now. So it's endured its time, I think. I mean, it's so cheesy. It's so 80s. We love like the fashion, the shorts, the, you know, the way we talk. It was hilarious, the New York accents. But I think it was a good time and we didn't take it seriously. So people see the, the cheese factor in it. So at 13, you were aware of how the film ended and what was going on. You, you hear that today. Nowadays, they kind of hide some of the more sensitive stuff from the kids and they don't really know what's going on. You, you knew that. You were aware. Oh, I did. Yes. They had myself, my, me and my mom, we had to read the script. They actually had to ask my mom at the callback if it was okay for me to have the penis in the movie. <laughs> Huge spoiler, if anyone doesn't know. Um, and, you know, that's really, it drove the whole film, that, that last shot. Um, and originally they were just going to have me stand there and they were they were sort of molding that piece. But then Ed French, the effects artist said, no, I think we really need to make a, a mold of her face and, and have a young boy stand there. And it was way more effective because he was a real guy. And um, as we see in that shot, the long shot is his full body and he had to shave and have a small face to fit into the mask. And he had to be 18 years of age to do the nudity. So it was, it was quite amazing what went into that, those last few seconds. Yeah, the, the way you see the effect, how did that work? I mean, was that just a still shot? It's it's amazingly creepy how it looks too at the end. It's it's more than just uh, like a, a a video shot or something. It's really a creepy thing. It is, and I think it's because he was terrified. So the young man who played the character at the end. I think he drank like a, a bottle of Jack Daniels. He was crying and he was standing so stiff in his being so nervous that that shot does come off in this kind of like, you know, animalistic primal kind of stance. And and then they overlaid, they had me growl, but they put all of this other texture on it with other noises. And I, I just think the moment is really truly unusual and creepy and weird and, you know, you hadn't seen a 13 year old kind of, you know, transition like that in a film. Yeah. Yeah. Completely yeah. shocked. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I know. I'm so, I feel so lucky and blessed to still talk about it almost 40 years later. It you know? definitely holds up. I mean, it, it still, it posts a lot of issues that are still a factor today, you know, bullying of people who are different, you know, and it's just kind of, I think it was ahead of its time in a lot of ways and it's really going to remain with people for a long time. I think you're definitely made your mark. You're definitely one of the first ladies of horror and we appreciate everything. Oh, thank you, Charles and Lloyd. I really appreciate that. Definitely. I'll say with the bullying, I mean, we've all felt that as you know, an adolescent. So I think it speaks volumes for people who feel maybe lonely and sad. And um, I feel very grateful to be able to talk to people about it who have had those moments in their in their lives. And um, I'm always an open door. So if people want to talk to me, I'm, I'm very thankful that if I can lend an ear or a conversation. That's what that's right. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so going on to another story, I once heard about you. Is it true you were on the set of Ghostbusters? I think she froze up. Oh, there oh. she is. She's back. Yeah. Did you say Ghostbusters? I said Ghostbusters. I heard you were on the I set of Ghostbusters. That. <laughs> That's true. I was. I um I was 15, and the same manager who had gotten me the role of Angela and Sleepaway Camp called and said they're making this movie called Ghostbusters. They need a couple of teenagers to be in the shot where they're painting the, the sign. And I was so fortunate to be there all day. You know, it was kind of like extra work, but it was it was uh, amazing to see Bill Murray was right next to me the whole time. And uh, and he even talked about like, oh, we should get lunch. You know, he was so cool and down to earth. And for me, I was just like a starstruck kid. So 
it was quite amazing, but it was a lot of fun. And and to show my kids the movie now, I'm like, there I am, like <laughs> in the background walking by. I so think a lot of people don't realize you were in that because I don't I don't see it come up too much. And I tell people that they're like, what? I'm like, she was. Ask her. <laughs> yeah, that and Fatal Attraction. I was yeah. in Fatal Attraction, and I got to work with Glenn Close and Michael Douglas as a teenager in New York. I was fortunate. I I was on a couple of Woody Allen films. So it was great experience and it, you know, it sort of made me realize how much I love this pro the filmmaking process and acting and being around other, you know, creative people. It was really, it's quite fascinating. So this is what this you is always what you wanted, wanted to do then? I think from when I was really little, I just, I was always like a big ham and loved to sing and dance. I wanted to be a musical theater actress. So um, I was really studying to kind of like, I wanted to be on Broadway and like do Anything Goes and MAME and all these musicals. But after Sleepaway Camp, I loved the art form of really creating like the special effects and, and just watching a horror movie be made was quite amazing. So I just jumped in and fortunately I was embraced and that was just like a, a love match. So I feel, yeah, really lucky to be involved. It was like, you just kind of go with your flow, you know, you, you feel it and you go with it and, and it's been wonderful. Besides Sleepaway Camp, which you're obviously most well known for, what is your favorite uh, role that you've uh, had over the years? You know, I've been lucky, especially as of late, like really within the past like seven or eight years, um, being an older actress, I play a lot of really fun character roles. Um, I was in a movie called Garlic and Gunpowder and I play like this this 300 pound mob boss where I'm like smoking a cigar the whole movie like this. And um, I, I also, um, I would have to say like Victor Crowley was really fun because I got to play like, you know, the New York publicist, um, but I consider them all like babies of mine where I love each one, you know, for their for their own little reasons and experiences on set. But uh, Return to Sleep Boy Camp was definitely a fun one. I was a uh, spoiler. I was a man in that. And I was in <laughs> six hours of makeup. Wow. And so that was really fun because I love getting into the prosthetics and the clothing. And, you know, even my mom said to me, are you sure you want to play this part? You know, all the girls will be running around to, like in bikinis and and looking glamorous. And I said, no, I want to be, you know, that guy with had a voice box. So definitely the character roles are where I had the most fun. I feel most comfortable kind of under the layers of the, the character, both physically and like even with what I create, you know, as the actor. So I have a movie called The Nun's Curse coming out. That was, that was really fun too, playing this crazy maniacal nun. So when does The Nun's Curse come out? Um, I think it comes out, it's May 7th, May 7th or May 12th. Yeah, by Tommy Faircloth, who's a wonderful filmmaker. He and I hit it off and we did a movie called Family Possessions together. And, and fortunately, I've been lucky to um, work with directors, you know, over and over um, several times. And we kind of have that, those love relationships, if you will. You them, right? you I felt them. them. <laughs> That's that's all it is. I just keep stalking them. They can't get rid of me, and they're like, "Okay, I'll put you in this this movie." I think it's because you not only stalk them, but you're also so nice. They're like, "We have to bring her back." Aww. That's what happens. Well, I love my friends and filmmakers, and yeah. Okay, before we say goodbye, uh, is there anywhere that we can send people? Do you have a website? Is it? Mm -hmm. Can anybody right now? Can they go online and buy an autograph or anything? Well, I'm actually doing, funny enough, today, I, I'm doing a live convention on my Instagram, Felissa Rose 123 It's really just going to be a Q&A where I'm live because I need that interaction and to feel the energy of, of all my friends. Um, so I figure we could all drink together. My husband's going to play music. He's a musician. And we're going to kind of feel that you know, that, that convention vibe. Um, and also I'm always on social media on Facebook and Twitter and, um, and I have a website, felissarose.com. So. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Well, it's an absolute honor to have you on. Thank you um, so much. Thank you please. for being so kind and so friendly to the horror community. I know they all love you for that. So really thank you so much. We do. Appreciate I love you, you both. Mwah. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. Thank All right. you. Bye. And good luck with the show. Have fun. We All right. We'll fun. see you on Instagram in a little while. Okay. I'll stalk you soon. Stalk Bye. Okay. Bye. <laughs>